Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. This is Shaden, the man that made his first $500,000 flipping vans, MacBooks, and anything else he could get his hands on. I, I think it's that I have this obsession with like getting what I want without paying for it. He skydives, surfs, has traveled to 68 countries, he's only 26, and he has plans to impact the world of space travel. Let's dive into his mind to understand his strategies, mindset, confidence, and visions for his life and the world. I'm intrigued. Do you think that you are a free human? I think I think I'm getting to the point, like, I think it's relative, but I think I'm getting to the point where I feel like a free human. To me, freedom is, I guess, the ability to do what you want, when you want, with who you want. I've been on my own path of discovering what freedom actually means. Yeah. And I've noticed that it's actually a really hard question to tackle yeah. because there's so many le levels to freedom. Everybody's like, well, freedom equals finances. It's a lot more than that, but yeah. let's start at that base because I think one of the things that you mentioned to me is that you made the first 500K flipping vans. Yeah. Welcome to the shop. This is where we build the sickest vans in the world. <laughs> it started in an elementary school. I've pretty much been like borderline unemployable my entire life. To be honest with you, like I'm a little too jumpy and like maybe free thinking, I guess. So yeah, I guess it, it started a long time ago. I basically have always been like smart, lazy, in, the, in a way like where I want to make money, I want to like be able to access everything that I want. And as a first grader, I had a whole candy business in school. Like I would go to Costco and buy like a ton of candy. And I would basically like siphon everybody's school like lunch money away from them. <laughs> like there were a lot of days where like I would come home with like a good 40, 50 bucks from school. <laughs> and these kids would like eat candy instead of lunch. <laughs> so it was like, it started there and it just was like, oh cool, like that's how you make money. Were the vans the biggest breakthrough for you financially. I spent like six years basically traveling around the world full time. I was like a pretty addicted to like seeing new places. So I went like now I've been to 68 countries. My mom was a flight attendant, so I had free first class flights that entire time. <laughs> so that helped a lot. Um, so all I had to do was basically figure out how to pay for my accommodations that whole time. So I was always like bouncing back and forth between like zero to 10,000. Like I would figure out how to make 10 grand like in a couple weeks and then I would go and like blow it on a trip. So like I, how would you replenish your bank account at the beginning? <laughs> yeah, so I would basically flip like primarily like iPhones, MacBooks. I've sold like a lot of MacBooks. <laughs> like So is this, wait, so your whole wealth that you've created, your whole lifestyle is flipping? Primarily, I was also a ski instructor. So I taught skiing for a long time. So I'd fly up to like Aspen with like a wealthy client for a week. And that's where I kind of got a taste of like the luxury lifestyle because they would like wine and dine me up there. And that was like where it, like the seeds were planted where I was like, you know, it's like I feel like, you know, like the quote is a mind stretched by new experiences can't return to its old dimensions. And it's like that was where I like broke out of my limiting beliefs around like how life could be and how comfortable it could be. We are just doing like one of the most robust electrical systems that has ever pretty much been put in a van here. It's fully off grid and you can pretty much run like everything you have in the van for weeks, months, like air conditioning and everything, like parked wherever you want in the world. So it's kind of cool. You basically can go up to the like the top of a mountain and have Starlink internet and power, hot water, shower, like your Nespresso, like everything you want and basically be like all the creature comforts of home, but basically in any location. I'm so impressed, <laughs> this is crazy. At what point did you know that your life is gonna be entrepreneurial? Was there like a tipping point where you thought, there's no way I'm doing it the normal life. Yeah, to be honest with you, I don't think it was ever a part of the equation or options. I, I guess when I think about like making money, I immediately like my brain just goes to like, oh, where's an opportunity that I can flip? Let's dig into this flipping mindset because that's something you mentioned to me earlier and that's very unique. I guess it to me, it seemed obvious like because I've just been doing it for so long, but like it's been the biggest key in my life. I want the toys and the cars and the boats and everything. And But I cannot wrap my head around like buying something brand new and losing money on it. If someone's like, hey, I gotta sell my car today. Here's an offer and they take it because they need it that day. And so they make an emotional decision to sell and I make a, you know, a very non-emotional decision to buy. Let's say I bought you know a car that's worth $10,000 and I just bought it for eight. Like my net worth just went up by two grand because I don't like look at anything as like income based. It's all about like increasing my total net worth. Interesting. And then how long do you hang on to something and then you sell it later? Yeah, I just remarket and list it that day. That day? There's a price that anyone would take for anything. So it's like, what would you take for that? If I came along right now and was like, hey, I'll give you this for your house. Like it should be listed for that, even if you're not trying to sell it. It's just kind of like this hustler mentality, I guess. And yeah, it just ended up being this thing that I realized I could take to a different level kind of. And 
the level that I want to take it to is like way beyond where I'm at. Can we see the inside yeah. of the build? This is what, this one's going to be done tomorrow, you said. Yeah, this will be finished up tomorrow for the most part. It'll be about 90% completed. But yeah, so the coolest parts about these vans are probably on the outside, to be honest with you, at least aesthetically, because that's the most expensive part of the build. That's where all the racks are. That's where our bumper is and our winch and all of our light bars. We also have this huge 13 foot awning on the side and snorkel and lighting. I mean, it, this, this van has more light than you really know what to do with. It's got like 160,000 lumens on the front. We started off with the traveling the world, 68 countries, then raising $10,000 through yeah. flipping MacBooks, working as a ski instructor. What was the next step? It gets to the point where I started building vans, saved up, and I ran a test ad because I saw these camper vans being built. And I was like, I could probably like flip a camper van. It was like hitting on multiple points. I was like, I could flip a camper van, I could have a camper van. And my girlfriend at the time was like, you should get a camper van. <laughs> like that seems really cool. So I had like three points of motivation to go and get a van and like build it out. And so I, I, I created like a test post, threw it up on Facebook, you know, just like I took a picture of someone else's van and posted it for it sale. It wasn't even your van. Yeah, no, I, I created like a whole like market test and it went like super viral on this Facebook group at the price that I listed it out, which was like 30 grand. It was like a pretty small van that I could have built for seven grand. And I was like, oh wow, I could like build this and sell this for 30 grand, cool. And I had like 800 comments in this Facebook group in San Diego. Then I went and bought a van. <laughs> for 10 grand, you know? And that's where the flipping helped because I got a $16,000 van for 10 grand. Yeah, I built that van over six months to a year. That one van that you bought for 10K? Yeah, it took me a long time. To try to figure out how to do everything. That was gnarly. <laughs> that was like really gnarly at the time because there wasn't any literature online. There wasn't like guides. There wasn't courses. There wasn't like, there, there weren't as many like tutorials. Like you kind of just like, when I would like look up like, oh, what gauge wire do I use for like the lights? It was like, there's no answer. Finally got my build finished. And I, I was in it like 23 grand and then I sold it for 70 grand. So I was like, oh, cool. I can make 50 grand. So you, That's cool. you bought it for 10, sold, you put, put, put 13 into 13 it. 13 extra and then you sold it for 70. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, on your first one. It was actually 69. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was fun. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, yeah, I ended up moving back into my dad's house and there were no rooms open because we had a bunch of roommates at the time. So I, I moved into a closet under the stairs actually. And I slept in this closet for four months while I built my second van. It was kind of crazy. I had like 50 grand like under my pillow because I was like, I'm not going to spend this on rent. It was like my nest egg, you know, I'm like, I can't spend it. Super frugal and cheap still at that point. And like, so like a lot of people would be like, well, I've got 50K, let me like- Get an apartment. Get an apartment, upgrade. But yeah. you still had that frugal mentality that kept you being like, okay, no, I need to keep make my money working for me. Yeah. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I, I can rest on my laurels now. Yeah. Up here we have a queen size bed that drops down from the ceiling. So this is super cool because it basically allows you to tuck your entire bed out of the way when you're not using it. And it keeps it clean so you can entertain uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guests in here. If it's a mess and you're like, I'm ready to go to bed, you can just drop your bed down and you have a clean queen size bed waiting for you. This also converts into another queen size bed on the bottom. So you have a queen here, a queen here, and then we'll be putting a rooftop tent on, which will have a full size bed in it. So you'll sleep about six people in here as well as be able to haul let's say eight people. So it's kind of like party bus slash bring all your friends camping slash bring your family camping and just kind of like designed for as much functionality as we can physically fit into the van, right? We're gonna be doing a hydronic radiant floor in here, so it'll kind of heat the whole van in winter off the coolant from the engine. So it'll just like radiate heat while you're driving and keep it nice and toasty. What could you not be paid a million dollars to give up? I would never want to give up my opportunistic and like visual, like visual, visualization skills, I guess, if that makes sense. So like being able to see things that don't exist yet, that would be like something I wouldn't sell for any amount of money in the world. And then also the ability to see anything that exists or doesn't exist and not envy people that have those things or live that way. Like I don't experience envy. Cause you know, you, know you can have it. Yeah, cause I just believe in myself too much, <laughs> you know? So it's th that belief, it's funny. It's like that belief is the key. This is kind of essentially the like tech wall. So this is where we have all of our switches, outlets, as well as a full 27 inch studio display. So you can plug in your Mac or whatever you want with a cord that goes around. And that way you have the full creature comforts of home. So you're not limited to like a MacBook in here. You basically have a full 27 inch monitor with surround sounds. So if you want to work or edit or record or whatever your creative passions are, you can really like zone into it here and have that full like at home experience. I think confidence comes from doing things you think you can't do. Like it's, it's almost like shattering your own limiting beliefs about yourself through 
action. So it's like you can't unstretch your mind again, right? Like you can't be like, wow, I can't finish a whole van after I finished a whole van. You're like, well, you can finish a whole van. <laughs> I've done okay, it. obviously I've done it. So something's working, yeah. right? And so you start doing that repeatedly and you start to build a lot of confidence in your ability to do things that seemed impossible. Yeah, no, I, I like this, uh, the confidence component because I figured out as well, like it is overcoming seemingly impossible challenges. Then yeah. you're just like, wait, I'm badass. So people are seeking confidence from so many different angles, but personally, I'm not really concerned about my exterior as much as like the interior, because if I think if your interior is confident, that's going to come through. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I'm not like, oh, my hair or my makeup or this or that, or my nose or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, if I know I'm badass yeah. and I can basically whatever I want, or I can create a life of my dreams and overcome the toughest challenges. I know I can step into any room and I belong there. Over here, we have your kitchen. This is basically one side of the kitchen here. We have your fridge freezer right down here. Tons of storage. There's all kinds of cabinetry in here. We got some really cool features. This is a wine cellar. This is something that's new on this build. We did a Nespresso machine that slides out. So you can basically slide this out to fill water in the back. This is so impressive. <laughs> so wild. This is so insane. I'm like, my yeah. I, my jaws dropped the whole time you're saying stuff. I'm like, <laughs> I wish I had that on a van and you just thought of the solution. Yeah. Like you've come up with a solution for it all. My brain just doesn't really sit still. Like I'm not really satisfied with any product that exists, including like phones and you know, lap, like everything I see, like I'm just always looking at like opportunities for how to improve it. So back to your living under the staircase. <laughs> you got 50K under your pillow. <laughs> <laughs> and you decide to flip another van. I bought another van and then I took on a client build. So that was the first time I made the mistake of <laughs> taking on a client who desi designs everything and ah. it's their van and they are paying for the materials and I'm just a laborer building it for them. That was cool. It also leveled me up again. So I'm not going to say it like I regret that. I would have done the same thing again, but very quickly I learned that like I can't be employed by people. I can't have timelines that are not self and self imposed. I'm down for the ones that I impose, but not the ones that other other people like. I don't like it when someone's like calling me or like breathing down my neck and being like, "Hey, I want this done at this time." You and you have to do it because you're my employee. That would just drive me nuts, and I wouldn't last a day. I'm designing this van around people who have like a lot of toys and gear and so we wanted to have a really big garage for ideally being able to hold like two electric hydrofoils like I'm learning how to fly electric paramotors which are like these little fans that go on your back so you can like fly wherever you want. If you can't tell this is kind of like a merging of my obsession with technology and toys and camper vans. It's a, it's a man cave. <laughs> it's a man cave. It's basically like I'm a little kid that wanted to build a fort and have all my toys in it. And it's just like way crazier. You know, like I don't get paid very often. I get paid like a few times a year, you know, and the rest of the time it's on me to like float myself through it. So it's, yeah. that you have to have the capacity for that too. That's the thing. And I, when I was, I was saying to you earlier, I think your capacity to be okay with these giant swings financially, like that's so important yeah. as a lot of people they cannot even fathom the idea that yeah. they're not gonna have a paycheck next month, but you, you're willing to be like, I've got nothing right now. And then I know I'm gonna have a big spike. Yeah. And like, that is the difference with, I think entrepreneurially, you need to be okay knowing that there's gonna be big dips. Yeah. Back here, we have a laundry chute on this side that comes out of the closet. So this will go into a little laundry bag. And then on this side, we have the trash chute. So this is the first time that we've done that. We're pretty excited for that. Just cause it kind of pushes all of your problems back to the garage, as well as like dirty gear, wet gear. Like you can just throw everything in here, close the doors, hit the road. So that's pretty rad. And basically this garage is what, probably one of the biggest garages in the game. Yeah, and it's not big enough. All right. Yeah. So you have 50K <laughs> yeah. you're underneath the closet. Yeah. How do you go from that to now? Like wh how, how many years ago was this? That was three, three years ago. So your big financial break came about. In the past three years, in over the past three years, it's been like a, like a slightly exponential, but gradual increase for sure. Yeah, I kept going with the vans. Like I basically just kept, so I bought another van. Then I put, I think 45K into the second van. I sold that one for 150. So same thing, tripled it again. And then what did I do on the last one? I bought one for 70 and put another probably 30 or 40 into it. Sold that one for 250. Wow. That was when it really started hitting that I could sell vans for a lot more. And then I can continue to basically repeat that process in the 250K range. Now I'm getting up to the point where I'm trying to shoot for 350 to 400 on these without me building them. And now you've outsourced the build aspect. You're working with someone yeah. that specializes in that and you focus on the marketing and the design of these vans. It gives me the space to do what I'm about to do, which is launch like this really cool brand of this 
you know, these vans, it's not like Shaden's DIY builds that are really cool <laughs> on YouTube. Um, <laughs> it's like, no, this is classic you know, I'm, 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 I'm launching an actual brand that will be, it'll be called Mothership Vans and it'll be basically like a very premium priced <laughs> and designed product that doesn't exist anywhere really in the world yet. Like it's going to be very innovative and take these things up to a level that they've never, like they don't exist at currently in the world. So you're the visionary, you're the executor. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it. it's been a really fun thing to watch both of us grow because we both came from, you know, like basically nothing at the time. Like we just had an empty van and felt completely broke and didn't know how to do any of this. And now we are building the coolest vans. Pretty much honestly in the world, I would say probably for sprinters, like we're getting really close to the pinnacle and the next vans I think will be up there. I think they're there. I think they're there, yeah. Like given the choice between being attached to material possessions or being able to have whatever I want for the rest of my life, it's almost like, am I gonna choose like the car now or like the jet later? Like, of course, like, I want to, like, continue this and continue scaling so that, like, one day I'm, like, flipping a jet. <laughs> and people are like, how'd you get there? And I'm like, well, I didn't get attached to my car. <laughs> you, I feel like you see life as a bit of a game. I definitely visualize all my decisions as, like, if I was playing a video game, like, what would I do that? I don't know. Like, I, I would definitely not, like, do anything average if I was playing a video game. Oh, my God, yeah. Why, like, why not push the boundaries? Like, would you just stand there and, like, you know, like press a repetitive button in a video game all day or like file paperwork repetitively. <laughs> Your mind is like so fascinating. Casually going for the most amazing drive around Antonitas in a golf cart. What's up? <laughs> Winning at life. <laughs> Dang, it goes fast. Wait, what? Yeah, that's it. It's stuck and that stops there. The what? It stops there. Yeah, I mean, like that's it. And hills are definitely a struggle. We can do it. <laughs> Yeah. So you do these little sprints, I guess. That's what you yeah. do. Like you like work and then enjoy work. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's primarily enjoy. Mm. <laughs> work to live. Definitely not the opposite. And what is the vision for the future? This is the best part. Okay, so the next three years, the way I look at it, I, I have it kind of broken down like pre-30 and then post-30. Life is over once you're 30. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but I know that that's, it's funny. I think when you're in your 20s, you're like, 30 is this like yeah. threshold. It's like- It is though. Whatever you have to have figured out, you need to be married or you need to have your job thing or you need to have your kids, you need to have like la, 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 all these things. It's like this like threshold in It's huge. Mind. Mine was like, I will make a million dollars before I'm 30. Yeah. And I did. I think pre-30, I envision, okay, let's start with health. Like I want to be like chiseled. <laughs> I want to be like in really good shape. So mentally, physically, like making sure that like my, my mind, my soul and my body are like taken care of. And then in business, you know, scaling mothership, like getting to the point where we're doing 12 vans a year, hopefully next year. And the next year after that, maybe one and a half times in that or doubling that again, if we if, I, if we can grow at that rate, we'll see how hard it is. I'm sure it's gonna be hard, but I also can do it. <laughs> we, we can also do it, you know? And like, this is my path from like, you know, one to 10 million, basically. That's how I envision the next three years. Yeah, I wanna like give myself enough capital so that on this game board of the world in a capitalist society, I can effectively move forward. And I actually think that it's it works pretty good. Like it's about as good as it gets. Like. The fact that you can basically come from anything and you can figure out a way to create value in the world and hone a skill and allocate capital to yourself and then reallocate that to things that you care about. Like that's like the most beautiful thing ever. And that's, you know, something that we have in America where we don't have every, everywhere else in the world necessarily. Like I want to be watering plants in the future that are connecting people in the world. And I want to design social structures and design cities and design I would like to be designing the first city on Mars and how it's laid out like geometrically and like how people can live there and how we can become multi-planetary. Like that sounds so exciting to me. Wow. And I want to be like the person that they call that they're like, oh yeah, you're like the person that we would call because obviously like you've spent a lot of time like designing housing and off-grid systems and community here and beyond and yeah. Wow. So anyway, that was a tangent. No, that's, that's inspiring. I love it. Like I think that's, this is one thing that I adore about you is the thirst that you have for life and already how much you enjoy living now. Mm. Like there's, your, your mind is very, very unique. It is such an exciting adventure to be in your presence oh, you <laughs> and too. ask you so many questions and just like know more about you because it is a fascinating mindset. And oh. I'm glad that people will now get a bit of access to that, a slice of it. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah, of course. For your time. <laughs> I feel the same way about you. It's, it's really like, it's just invigorating and refreshing to be around people who are also excited and just share this like level of thinking and yeah. belief. Not even like it's like a some elite level of thinking. It's like a just a just beliefs and like a perspective on the world. Yeah. It's so nice. <sighs> I found my people. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you so much. All the information about you and all your links to everything is gonna be in the show notes. Is there yeah. anything else 
that you would like I would to share? Yeah, I would end it on the my little quote that kind of dictates every day of my life. It's your mind is a garden, your words, I say your words and your thoughts and your actions are the seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds and you can pour water on them. So plant the seeds carefully. Be careful which ones are in there in your garden and water them. <laughs> yeah. ah, amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I am so happy. <laughs> I am so happy. Oh, Break. that was awesome. That was awesome. Thanks. Man, your mind is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to be on the side of things. It's yeah, so just weird. like the way that you navigate the world is outrageous. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. All right, cut. Cut. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sir Lamour, and I am a free human. Therefore, I do absolutely nothing but recline and relax at all times. So, with the spirit, I'm going to do my job <laughs> and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace from the comfort of my own home. I actually can't eat this grape because my face is stuck. <laughs> Squarespace is a magnificent tool for business owners, free humans and artists like myself to build a beautiful online presence that actually gets the results. Let me tell you about some of the incredible features of Squarespace, such as the new editing interface. This is a game changer, it makes your site so customizable, therefore it can suit your needs completely. With Fluid Engine's flexible grid, place blocks anywhere, even overlapping other blocks, and resize them directly on the page. Of course, there's the Unreal 24-7 customer service that comes with Squarespace, as well as the award-winning designer templates that make you look professional even if you do not have an eye for design. Plebs! <laughs> you do also have the complete marketing tools, including email management, top analytic tools to track the performance of your webpage to continue refining and improving the results of your business in in real time. Squarespace hosts your content seamlessly, text, videos, and photos, of course, but also audio blocks can be inserted in case your podcast, for example. Excuse me, plane, do you not see that I'm making an ad? Shh. And this is just a few of the amazing features of Squarespace. So therefore, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Sorel, that's my name. <laughs> to get 10% off your first website or domain. Obnoxious Sorel is out. Ah, oh, never mind.